So this is a project that uh, we're just getting started out at Lake Norman, uh, working on hybrid striped bass. This is uh, sort of a continuing project. We've been stocking hybrid striped bass at Lake Norman since uh, 2013 when we switched over from striped bass to hybrid striped bass. Uh, the first project that we ran, which is just about to wrap up, was what's called an exploitation study, which is looking at uh, how many fish are harvested that we actually are, are stocked. And so many anglers are familiar with the orange tag that we've had uh, put in fish that are out in the lake. And if you caught an orange tag fish, you were able to get a reward for that. Well, this, this study is a little bit different. This is a habitat use study. And so what we're doing here today is we're implanting two types of transmitter tags into these fish. Uh, one is an acoustic transmitter, which is the small black transmitter, and then the other is a radio transmitter, which is the, uh, the larger tag that has a radio antenna out, uh, that comes out the external, it's an external tag that comes out of the fish. So, um, and then all these fish are going to be marked with blue uh, tag, streamer tag, similar to the orange tag that you see. So if you're familiar with Lake Norman years ago, um, we had some summer kills of striped bass, um, particularly down in the lower end of the lake near the dam. Uh, since we've been stocking hybrid striped bass since 2013, uh, we haven't seen those kills anymore with hybrid striped bass. Uh, so the question is, are they still going down there and not susceptible to the, the conditions uh, that are there and, and they're able to thrive and, and, and do uh, normal activities? Or are they uh, going to different parts of the lake uh, where conditions are more favorable? So once we get these fish implanted with transmitters, um, our plan is to actually come back and do two types of tracking. Um, as I mentioned, the external tag with the, the radio antenna on it is going to allow us to track these fish over large areas. Um, that radio tag, we can actually hear that tag uh, with an antenna that we'll have in the boat and that'll allow us to get close to the fish. Once we get close to the fish, the smaller tag, the acoustic tag, actually has two sensors on it. It has a temperature sensor and a depth sensor. And that'll allow us to determine how deep the fish is and at what temperature the fish is sitting out in the water column. Also, when we're not out actively looking for this fish, we actually have receivers that are uh, placed uh, in the lake at various points that will uh, pick up the small sonic tag as the fish swims by. And it will transmit that information, that temp, temp and that depth information to the receiver. And the receiver will store that information. We can come back at a later date and archive all that. So combining the, the active data where we're out searching for the fish, looking for them with the, the antenna, um, and then also uh, the receiver stations, uh, that's gonna give us a, a very uh, large scale picture of what these fish are doing throughout the reservoir, throughout the year. Hello, my name is Corey Oakley. I am the Piedmont Region Fisheries Supervisor for the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Today we're out on Lake Norman fishing for hybrid striped bass, otherwise known as Bodie bass. Here at Lake Norman, we've started a fishery back in 2013 uh, of stocking hybrid striped bass into the lake. We stock about 325,000 fingerlings each year into the lake, sometime around the middle of June. And so today we're out here uh, catching fish for a project that we're working on. And what we, you can, you can catch hybrids fairly easily once you find them uh, in the lake. One easy way to do it is by using uh, what we call down rods. So it's a, it's a reel like this and rod, and I'll reel one up and show you kind of the, how it's put together. So it's a fairly simple setup. Uh, you have an egg sinker that's ahead of your swivel here. Uh, the egg sinker obviously gives it weight to get it down to the right depth that you want it to be at. Then you have the swivel that you tie, and then you tie a leader onto that swivel. Typically we use fluorocarbon leader. Um, that's so that the fish can't see the leader. And then we, you get down to a hook, and you can use all kinds of hooks. Today we're using uh, a gold treble hook, uh, but you can also use circle hooks. And then today's bait is an alewife or river herring. Um, it's a common forage fish here at Lake Norman. You can also use threadfin shad or other types of fish as well uh, when using this setup. And what you're looking for is you go around the lake and find spots where the fish might be. Uh, look for humps in the lake or islands that are underwater. Um, look for points that they might be on uh, off of ledge channels. And when you find them on the graph on your sonar, uh, you set them to a depth that you want to be at. And you just kind of count out uh, what that depth might be and get it set there and then just put it in the rod holder and the fish will come by hopefully and bite your line and you can catch them that way.
If you're not interested in using a natural bait like uh, herring or threadfin shad, you can also fish for them with artificial lures. Um, some common ones are, are swim baits. They have fairly small mouths, so we typically use a smaller swim bait with a smaller head on it. This is a eight, eight ounce um, head on the hook, and this is a Kitek swim bait, but you can use other kinds. Uh, generally silver or white in color is generally the colors that we use here at Lake Norman. Um, if you're not interested in swim baits, if you find a school that's say maybe on the bottom, uh, you can use a jigging spoon. Uh, different colors, silver sided or a green sided. Some people use a white and a green half and half color. Um, and, and a jigging spoon, you just drop the spoon down on the school and you just jig it up and down. Uh, and typically they'll bite it uh, when you start jigging that spoon. One other artificial bait that's, that's fairly common that a lot of people out here use is a roadrunner um, with, a, with a marabou tail and that's just that feathery tail that you see. This is a quarter ounce head. Uh, it's got the underspin spinner on it and you can use multiple colors. This is all white. Some people use a chartreuse head with a white tail. Some people use a white head with a chartreuse tail. Um, it just really depends on, on the color that they're hitting that day. Um, generally, I think they're looking for that, that spinner that's underneath. Uh, I think that's what kind of attracts the fish here at Lake Norman. Uh, the Lake Norman fishery here uh, for hybrid striped bass are typically during the cooler months of the year. So starting mid to late October, uh, fish will start to start biting. Um, anglers will start giving reports that they're catching those fish out here at the lake. Um, it gets really good uh, come late November into early December, fish start to school up. A lot of times in the wintertime you'll see birds working on the lake um, and that's typically they're working above hybrids. Hybrids are feeding and the birds are feeding off of what the hybrids are feeding on. And then as you move into the spring of the year, uh, the fish kind of move out into the river channels and move up into the river um, to spawn during the spring of the year and they're easy to catch that way as well. And then by mid to late May, the fish typically start biting less. And by the summertime, uh, the fishery's kind of over for that period of time. They don't bite really well during warmer months.